In today's Coaster Spotlight, we are featuring a Gaslauer Infinity Coaster inspired by Cardan and Hangtime Coasters. The ride aims for realism and the creator has built in custom supports, boarding station, transfer tracks, maintenance shed, and even detailed the surrounding areas with custom pathing and garden work. Coaster track is looking really polished and it should make for a very fun experience. So buckle up, keep your arms in at all times and enjoy me in today's episode of Coaster Spotlight. Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Coaster Spotlight. In today's episode, we are featuring Wind Force, an infinity coaster created by Loken. And here they say, Hi Johnny, this is Wind Force, a Gaslower Infinity Coaster heavily inspired by Kernan at Hansa Park and Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm, and made with the new Infinite Coaster in Classic Rides DLC. The coaster looks best at nighttime and was made in nine hours, straight from when the DLC was released at 10 a.m. and finished at 7 p.m. I hope you enjoy it. Very cool. Let's uh, take a closer look. All right, here we are at Wind Forest, ladies and gentlemen. Love the little uh, park area. You know what? Let's let's uh, let's bring some guests in. Let's speed it up a little bit and get some guests in here. Why not? Make it a little bit more immersive. <laughs> there it goes rip it on by. I love these um, realism creations when you've gone in and detailed and make a park area. However, if you are looking to put this in your park, the creator has been very smart and uh, made both a park file, which we can view here today, where it's all set up, nicely decorated and all that but there's also a blueprint form where you can download this and put it directly into your park. And I think that is the way. I think that is the future, guys, when you are building these blueprint coasters out of 4,000 pieces. Go ahead, put them into a park, open it up, let some guests in, and then detail the area on the outside with another couple hundred, if not a thousand or 2,000 more pieces to make it a little bit more immersive for the presentation and the sake of a uh, coaster spotlight. So I think, that's, uh, I think that's the future. I think that's the way it makes for a better experience for all of us. And we can get these, you know, more smaller blueprint coasters, not so extravagant, where we have these like crazy end-to-end -end coaster experiences. You know, those can be uh, really, really awesome, but sometimes we got to go less is more. Sometimes realism's better. Just these small little projects that are built in nine hours can be quite a fun video and experience for us to check out. So as long as it has that polish and that level of detail, like the uh, maintenance sheds here with the transfer tracks and all that, uh, I think it elevates it and makes it a lot better. So definitely open to doing more of these realism coasters, these recreations coasters, which you guys saw in the last episode this week, um, aiming for, you know, recreations, realism, that sort of thing. Love to see it and want to do more of it, but we need to see you guys pushing things because a lot of times the ones in the submission bins are just coaster tracks with nothing else. And I find it uh, a little unappealing at first. So kind of hard to make an episode on when there's, not much to talk about other than just the coaster layout itself. I like the full package. So here we are at the Wind Force Typhoon Infinite. It's also a Gaslauer Infinity Coaster, part of the uh, Rides DLC pack, as they mentioned. We have a track length of 740 meters, 60 miles per hour, five inversions, three airtime counts. Really good stuff here. It's all looking nice. Also too uh, important to mention, they have three coasters running on this. So super efficient if you were to place this into your own theme parks.
short but sweet really nice uh track layout on that and the creator did say they give us uh they wanted us to feature it at nighttime let's take a look at this nighttime lighting Ooh, really nice again it's the whole package as I mentioned, we have the whole layout, realism, nice queue, nice boarding station, maintenance bay, transfer tracks, and even nighttime lighting. I guess the only thing it's missing is a little bit of a light show, some triggered sequences, you know, maybe a couple hours. You said you built this in nine hours uh, upon the uh, DLC being released. Maybe a couple more hours to give us a little bit more of a light that follows that coaster as you do have almost like a, a dual color going with your theme with wind force. Maybe you can have some lights blacking out or some uh, white lights going across the launch pad here that would definitely elevate it just a tad bit more but i think the design itself is actually pretty good so why don't we uh check this out at nighttime here we can uh do the seat view here why not Really nicely done. Great elements. This is definitely a, a less is more presentation. As you guys can see, it has everything that you want it to have. Great uh, presentation, great nighttime lighting. It's all there. Love to see it. I think you could push it just a little bit more, but it still makes for a really great episode. And the fact that you did all of this in just nine hours is really impressive. It's a fun coaster, great design. You put some uh, custom signage in there, good color themes, nice boarding station. It looks and uh, feels nice. It's a great presentation and has time tons of elements of realism. And and to our creator, Loken, I think he did a really good job at this in, in, in the time given. It's a good presentation, and I think it sets the tone of what we're looking for for smaller blueprint spotlights, the full package, good coaster good design, and nice layout. It's, it's really nice, and I, I hope to see more stuff like this in the future. I definitely think there's room for improvement. You can elevate that theming a little bit more. You can expand some of these areas a bit more, make a bigger coaster, but this is definitely, for me, if we're going for the realism, approach i want to do more spotlights like this going forward in 2023 take take this for notes but then elevate it a little bit more we can push it a little bit further add in bigger coasters with more features and expand on these micro areas for your theme parks like we saw earlier in this week with the uh, incredit coaster <laughs> I think that's just a, a really good example of nice realism recreation coasters and that sort of thing. This one not being a recreation here today, but inspired by two real coasters. I think that's great. We want to see more stuff like this on the channel going forward. And we'll definitely have those insane, crazy creations that you all know and love going closer towards the weekends. Boom. So Loken did a really good job on this one. In my opinion, what did you guys think? Fire away down in the comments below. And that is going to do it for me in today's episode of Coaster Spotlight. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye now.